Johnny, Johnny here. From high school. I'm just calling to thank you very much for the car that you get okay, it sent to me. I did finally get it. I just wanted to get back to you and let you know I'm doing very good. And I'm really feel back to work on Wednesday. This Wednesday. Very like to you. So I should be at school. Feel free to call me anytime, Johnny. I always enjoy talking to you on the phone when you call. I appreciate it and I appreciate your thoughts for me. Thank you and all that, okay? I hope you call me back. Bye. station at the corner of uh, White Canyon and Soledad for 33 years we've been there and we used to hire a lot of kids from Shep Canyon High School to work for us also and over the years a lot of uh, a lot of the kids uh, grandparents and great-grandchildren went to school at Canyon that I ended up meeting when I went to work at Canyon High School after doing my garage work at uh, Shepherd. doing something. I, I like making the school as my home because I'm there all the time so I for, be comfortable for myself. And I, in the evening I usually have a radio on playing music, relaxing music. And I have several of the teachers will come in and say, oh, Donnie's here. This music, son. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, Hi. thank you. Have a good weekend, sir. Thank you for this fine music to play every night so we go home with it. It is on, too. Beautiful, it? baby. You're welcome. Thank yeah, a little classical music, Brahms, Beethoven, all those guys. Right? All of them. I like all the piano music that I get. In my second year, I was getting there was a couple couple kids that were in some of the classrooms, and uh, he said, "I have something for you." So I said, "Okay." So he brought me a picture that he did in art class. There was a clown and another one, and he said, "I want you to, I want to give this to you." And that was my second year. Then, so I hung it in my custodial. And the staff was very good. You know, and I go around and look for things to help out without him have to ask me. Donnie's found a home. He's very happy there. So my my employment at Canyon High School cares about me, my wife, and I. Shows because of my worth attitudes, how I care about what I do and present myself at Canyon High School with the students and the staff makes a difference. morning and was feeling pretty good about midday I felt kind of tired didn't feel good right so I talked to Pinky Bauer which is the principal secretary I told her when she was ready to go home I was gonna lock up and go to the doctor's because I wasn't feeling good so I was gonna wait for my wife to come to take me so she got home and I told her I needed to go to the doctor because I didn't feel very good so she's okay let's go so she took me down to first care and first care checked me over a little bit and she said, well, I think the way you're acting, I don't think it's what you're thinking it is. So maybe you should go over to emergency. So she drove me over to emergency and they took me in there and that's when they turned around and said, you're having a heart attack. And then uh, Donnie told me across the room, he said that he loved me and I loved him and that um, 
he's my rock and I'm his rock. And she says she'll, Donnie told her to take care of me. And then I got down to the to the emergency room and I asked for Donnie Kite and they didn't know where he was. And oh, that scared me half to death of where he was. And I didn't know what was going on. And there was four four days in the hospital. Yes, it, yes. She'd come by every day and then she, she went left. And the nurse says, I gotta have to shut the door for a while because you get too many people coming and you're not getting your rest. <laughs> and she said, the phone, they took the phone off the hook because the phone calls were really being. She says, you're worse than a president. <laughs> I go, no. She says, seriously? She says, your phone calls are getting out of, out of yeah. control. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, too funny. <laughs> so you can tell that girls are coming back then. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go before me. I'm 97 years old, so you have to catch up. And I said, I don't think I'll catch up with you, Dad. He's <laughs> at 60 some years old. So he, he just teased me. He says, You're going to be around a while longer. I says, Yes. God gave me a second chance, Dad, so I'll be here still. Well, I was in the hospital from a heart attack, and I told the nurse, I says, I feel like I got a rash or something under my, my face, and she says, yes, you do. So it was, I had it broke out in a real bad rash, which I still have some up on the top of the forehead here. So I shaved it off to try to get rid of the rash that I had underneath the beard. So, And she likes it this way, and she had, she, she, she says, that looks nice, leave it off, and then... The, I says, met, when I met Donnie... I was 17 and a half, and Donnie's six years older than I am. I met him with the beard, so I'm, I've am i never seen him that often without the beard. I'm used to him without the beard, but it, I like him. He looks younger without the beard. Yeah. That's what all the... Baby face. That's what some of the students and some of the teachers have said. He looks so much younger without the beard. So I'll leave it off for a while until I decide to grow it back. <laughs> 